Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending March 25th, 2017. And this show is going to be a single subject show about time travel, and it's based on a video that a friend of mine named Brian made called Time Travel and Chicken. And I will actually put the link up, just like I will links to most of the stuff I talk about here, um, so that you can pursue those links. And uh, if you get a chance, to check out his video. It's a very interesting video, and he talks a lot about, while well, while he's making chicken, he talks about time travel, and he talks about the uh, paradoxes about time travel. He uh, talks about the question that everybody asks if there's all these time travelers, where are they, why haven't we seen them? So let me get into first a little bit of history, and then I'll get into some of my theories and various, none of them are original theories. They're put forth by other people, but anyway, I'll present them. But the very first um, written works that we know of about time travel was not actually, some people think it was H.G. Wells' The Time Machine. Before that, there were works about uh, people using dreams, uh, magics, uh, supernatural means to travel in time, but the first actual practical machine, time machine actually, was presented by a Spanish author called Enrique Gaspar, and he was a contemporary to H.G. Wells and was aware of H.G. Wells' work. But uh, seven years before H.G. Uh, Wells did The Time Machine, he did a book, uh, and it's loosely translated. He made up, actually, a, a Spanish word to describe this, and it's uh, it's like, against time we fly is the word he made up, but it's being uh, re-released. Well, it's already been re-released and uh, translated into English, and it's called The Time Ship, and you can actually find it. Just look up Enrique Gaspar and The Time Ship on uh, Amazon, and it's available. Some people say it's not that great of a read, though. It's... Uh, it was originally written as a small uh, operetta, a small play. So those were the first incidences, and those were back in the late 1800s. So, First off, one of the answers that I actually present forth to why we don't see any time travelers coming back in time is it may be very possible we can only travel forward in time, just like we're traveling now. I mean, every hour we travel one hour into the future. So basically people are talking about if you want to time travel, you would actually be jumping faster in time. Maybe for every hour, travel two hours in time, or maybe for an hour's worth of time in a time machine or, or a time bubble or whatever you create, um, one hour's of time would get you a day into the future or a week or a year or whatever. So um, it's already been proven that this can take place under extreme circumstances. Traveling very fast, like I talked about last week, the uh, GPS uh, global positioning satellites, overhead travel so fast they actually travel slightly into the future fractions of a second and that has to be made up for in the calculations so astronauts too uh, over their time of traveling very fast compared to other human beings have actually jumped forward in time fractions of a second so if you can actually in extreme cases get up to maybe 10 percent 20 percent of light speed time would slow down for you although you wouldn't notice it compared to what's taking place on earth so you could actually travel and come back to earth and you would be maybe feel like a day went by and a year would go by on Earth or whatever. Also, getting getting near a very large, massive object like a black hole or a star and uh, getting close enough to dilate the time but not so close that it actually tears you apart because you do have that little problem, too, of uh, objects with massive gravity actually being able to tear things apart. But if you could do that and spend time near a massive object, time would not seem to go faster for you, but time would go faster back on Earth. So... Um, the other thing going forward, and there's this plot's used in a lot of movies, is some form of hibernation or stasis to where they could slow your body down so that it, you just did not age or you aged at such a slow rate. You could spend 200, 300, 400 years aboard a spaceship and travel to some you know places and, or maybe you just even stay on Earth. Maybe for some reason you would have an illness or something like that and you would go into hibernation and then wake up 200 or 300 years later, hopefully, where they would have a cure for that illness. So... Those are the reasons why I would say most definitely if those, if any of those theories hold true, then you're just not seeing anybody come back because it's just not possible. It's only possible to go the one direction in time. So um, there's the other theory. There, now, here's some theories that scientists are putting forth that there's a way to sort of cheat this going back in time. If you actually built a time machine, you could come back to that time when that time machine was built. So any time after the time machine, you could come back to there. So there would be some kind of theoretical connection between the time machine's existence and then as long as the time machine, I guess, stays operable, you can get into it and then come back into that time machine at the time it was originally created. Uh, 
don't even try to ask me to explain these theories behind this because it's way bigger physics and math than I'm able to understand, but at least I trust the scientists that have come up with this, that that's one possibility that the, the machine itself um, determines the time that you can go back to and uh, at least creates anchor points or something like that, I would call them. The other thing that um, scientists are proposing, too, is possibly wormholes, although there would be less control of that, too, because um, even though wormholes are theoretical, if they should exist and match with the theory, they're not really even sure themselves, the scientists that talk about wormholes, you may actually at the other end of the wormhole, you may jump into the past, you may jump into the future, you may be at approximately the same time as when you started, or you could even be in an alternate universe. So um, that's another problem too. And just like uh, getting back to the jumping to the future, it's a one-way trip and you don't know if the future is pretty desolate, you know, four or five hundred years in the future, Earth is just a wasteland for some reason, you basically signed your death warrant. So. Uh, yeah, same way with the wormhole. It could be that wormholes have to have some kind of a distance between the starting and the ending point to function properly. And then even if you could jump into the past, like say I could, uh, I could determine somehow calculate that this wormhole would bring me 100 years in the past. I may be 100 years in the past, but I may be clear at the other side of the universe too. And so far away, I mean, if it was just random chance where it came out, it would be very little chance I would be coming out anywhere near Earth where I could get back to Earth and influence the time whatsoever. So that would also keep the paradoxes from forming too that yeah for some reason people can use wormholes to travel in the past but you're never likely to ever come out anywhere near where you could actually affect the timeline of where you originally started so wormholes is another possibility um, it's also the possibility that people are actually coming back in time and it is happening but some kind of law or authority that exists in the future uh, controls the time machines it may be such a complex undertaking and it probably is and requires so much time and input and energy that some group is controlling when people come back in time and controlling the fact that they can or cannot make changes. The other thing I'm thinking of just theoretically, um, how do you know they didn't come back in time and alter something, you know, and in some case maybe let's say we didn't win World War II, but then for some reason the time authority decided, you know, we should have won World War II, the U.S. should have won World War II instead of the Germans, and they came back and just changed enough little minor things that nobody really noticed it was done from anything outside, but then all of a sudden it, it flipped the history, and we just, we don't remember the time that it didn't happen, we remember the time that it happened the way we remember it, and it's a change time. Um, so that's a possibility too. The other thing that I'm thinking of too, and this has no, I've seen no credible scientific theories behind it, but it's just got a logical sense to it too, and that's the Terminator movies, the way they deal with time. I don't think this was the original premise, but I think later on in the movies, they kind of let people know that when um, anybody would go back in time, they would actually fork off from the original time. So it wouldn't be like you would be in the same exact timeline that you were. In other words, in your timeline, all people will notice is that you disappeared and you weren't there anymore at a certain point. And then you jump into another time that starts out exactly where you left off at the other one, but it'll actually fork off in a different direction and it will be different but very similar people, places, times, everything like that. So there would be no chance for a paradox that way. In other words, you could just, uh, every time you continuously jumped into your time machine and went back to the past, it would just be forking off and it would never come back into the original timeline. So that's a possibility too. Now, I've got some references here if you want to, and another guy's got an idea too. His, his name is Ronald Mallet, and I think I've talked about him before. He's a scientist that he lost his dad at a very early age, so he was determined to become a theoretical scientist so that he could come up with some way to go back in time and see his dad again. Now, he's saying himself he's pretty much determined in his mind that travel back, to the, back in the past uh, by a human being is probably not possible, but what he wants to do is come up with a machine where you could communicate with the past. Now, communication across vast distances is a lot easier than sending spaceships. We can communicate with a star four light years away from us in four years and get an answer back in another four years, provided we have something to communicate with, obviously. So that's, you know, something that can be done, you know, several times in somebody's lifetime, if not many. It was not unusual back in hundreds of years ago to not hear from a family member for every three or four years because they would be maybe across the ocean and being able to get any communication done was very difficult. So hearing from people every three to four years is something we've dealt with in the past. And that may be his idea of communicating through time, just like with vast distances, may be the way we can do that because then you, you know, have less to have to deal with and less energy needs to do it. Um, nothing's come of it yet that I know of, but it's an interesting theory. So, 
And I've also got a couple of links to one to LiveScience.com where it talks about the various theories and, and examines. You know, some scientists think, most, most scientists do think that traveling forward in time is going to be eventually accomplished, although it's going to take lots of uh, great scaling up of energies and things like that to do it. Uh, but very few, and there, there's a few, and it talks about them too. And then um, also I've got another article too from BBC News World Europe too about um, talking about time travel. So these are some basic theories that I'm just kind of putting forth for you guys to think about. And uh, so if you want to get a chance, uh, add to the discussion. If you have additional theories that I didn't think about, um, different ways, I'm sure there's probably easily three, four, or five more that other people could come up with. But basically, just based on what I've studied and based on you know, in the one case, the Terminator movie that kind of makes sense just from a, a logic standpoint. Um, give me your viewpoint in the comments about time travel. And uh, if you think, you know, when, when do you think it's going to take place? When do you think time travel into the future is going to take place? And uh, do, you, do you yourself think it's possible to travel in the past? And uh, what theories do you have about things, uh, ways it can happen and ways it can't happen? So anyway, um, check out the video, like I said, of my friend uh, Brian. Check out his video, Time Travel and Chicken. And uh, take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.